I'm Diane Kraft. If you have a bright, hardworking child at home who has to work too hard to learn, you'll love my January article. It's entitled, Identifying and Correcting a Blocked Learning Gate. We're going to look at why these kids have to use too much battery energy to learn when the other kids in the family don't have to use all that battery energy. Many parents have a child at home who is a bright, hardworking child who has to work too hard to learn. And during this day, the parent frequently hears the child say, I'm so dumb, I can't do anything. Now, the parent feels helpless when they do this because they hear this. They know the child isn't dumb, but the child feels that way. But the parent does know that the, that the child's having to use way too much energy to learn. He's often behind in one or more areas, in maybe in reading, or in math, or writing. They're behind and you're nervous about it. Well, what can a parent do? Is testing the answer? Well, it can be, but many times testing just gives us scores and labels, and we still don't know exactly what to do to help this child at home. In my clinic in child diagnostics in Denver, many of the parents and families I see have had extensive testing done for their child, but they still don't know what to do to help them at home. They have been labeled auditory processing problem, or dyslexia, or dysgraphia, but they don't know what to do. They have found that doing presenting the material slower, louder, with multiple repetitions, or writing the words ten times more, or learning the sight words on a trampoline isn't doing it. The child may be making progress, but they're not making leaps. They're still so far behind that you're nervous. Well, in this article, we're going to take the mystery out of learning. It's by studying brain research, we're going to see there are just four learning gates, and we can identify learning glitches or disabilities using these learning gates. These learning gates are what we call information pathways. It's how the child gets information in and gives it out. When one or more of these learning gates is blocked, a child becomes stuck in that area. We're not talking about learning styles. We're talking about actual learning pathways that are blocked for this child that they can't use. They're not available to them. They're easily identifiable by characteristics. The more characteristics a child has in these learning gates, the more severe the learning problem is going to be. They can have a mild learning glitch, or they may have a more involved disability such as dyslexia or dysgraphia. It's all correctable. We just need to identify the troublesome area and apply the prescriptive corrections to that learning block. These problems can usually be taken care of at home once a parent has the knowledge of how to help that child. Bottom line, these kids are using too much battery energy for a process that should not use battery energy. Dr. Mel Levine says that in his one mind at a time. The four learning gates that need to be wide open to make learning easy are the visual learning gate, the auditory, the writing, and the focus. Look, when you look at the visual processing gate, we're not going to confuse this with the visual learner. This is the actual brain process of the eyes tracking left to right to make a seamless fashion of left to right. If the left to right processing of eyes is not lodged in the child's automatic hemisphere, oftentimes their eyes fatigue when they want to learn to read. They don't like to read very long. Or if they're younger, they're on Instead of reading on, it'll switch and become no, or was will become saw. Their eyes aren't working together as a team while crossing the midline. This is actually, once we identify this, we can do corrective exercises at home. The auditory processing gate is the most puzzling gate because there are 10 different channels. A child doesn't have all the channels blocked, but just some of them. If a child has dyslexia, the majority of the auditory channels are blocked. Then there are several myths. Sometimes parents will say, my child's an auditory learner because they love to listen to stories. But in reality, that child is a visual learner. He's listening to stories while he's making pictures in his head. That's why he likes listening to stories. Or they'll say, my child is, has an auditory processing problem because he can't remember three things I tell him to do. In reality, that's a focusing problem because if it was an if you would tell them three things like go to the kitchen and get a candy bar and a cup of chocolate milk and a cookie, generally they remember those directions. It's not that they're 
they're being ornery. It's just that it takes them too much energy to remember things that aren't interesting. Interesting things are easy for them to remember auditorily. A child who really has an auditory processing problem can't remember phonics rules, not for, for spelling, but for reading. Sight words are hard. They often can't remember all the months of the year in order, such a puzzling thing for them. They can't hear their own silent voice. We're going to look at the characteristics of a child with an auditory processing problem, and more importantly, what to do about it. The third gate we're going to look at that can be blocked is the writing gate. When that is blocked, this is the child or teenager who can tell you a most fascinating story, but when you, when you ask them to write it or type it, they write very little. They are so allergic often to their pencil that they will do the longest math problem in their head rather than put the offending utensil in their hand. In fact, they can know so many things, they can tell you so many things, but when you ask them to put the offending utensil in their head, they can't remember anything and they only write a little bit. This child may be even writing reversals longer. They break out in a rash when we ask them to write something down, even if we use the computer, because it's a two by four between their head and their hand we need to get rid of. By now, the mom has given up on teaching spelling. She says, I give up, he's never gonna learn spelling, I'll use spell check. But you're nervous because you know the spell check doesn't work very well. This is a child that can look sloppy, lazy, or unmotivated because they're so bright in every other area, but they're writing so little for you. This child has a writing block that can be corrected at home. It may present itself as dys dysgraphia, but rest assured, it still can be corrected at home. The fourth learning gate we're going to look at is a focusing and attention gate. Oh, this is the most mysterious gate because it can look like the child has many learning disabilities when in reality, he just can't sustain focus. This is a child who loses focus so many times during the day that a simple assignment takes him all day to do. The mom finds she needs to sit with this child or teenager in order to help him remain focused. As soon as she leaves, he can't finish the work. So sometimes the child's nervous system is so impacted with this learning gate out that they have meltdowns during the day with very little provocation. We're going to look at the question, is it character or chemistry? What can we do to help this child feel better? Dr. Sidney Walker says in his clinic, children act how they feel. We're gonna look at what's going on with the serotonin and other areas that will help them, other neurotransmitters that will help them to focus and to keep them ner their nervous system happy so they don't have meltdowns. We're gonna look at in the physical reasons for a child's focus or behavior issues. This is especially important for the sensory processing child. The child who has sensory processing issues, who puts their hands over their ears, whose the noises are too loud, or tags bother them, and they only eat limited foods, or, or all sorts of textures bother them. That's a child who's using too much energy to keep his, his nervous system in equilibrium. So I hope you enjoy this article. We'll be expanding on each one of these themes and taking one gate at a time in our articles that we write throughout the year. God bless you.